Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our, what number is it, Noah? You've got the wrong screen up. Our 38th Perth Elam at Home. Uh, great to have you all with us. Remember, give us a shout, give us a mention, and we will welcome you all individually later. Uh, second Sunday in Advent, I'm going to ask Caleb this week to come and light two candles. Uh, the themes of Advent, which I never have to admit, I never knew, are hope, which we spoke, I spoke about hope last week, and I, today is uh, peace, the theme, uh, second week in Advent, the theme is, is peace, so we're looking at uh, peace today when I eventually get round to speaking. I might uh, do it myself next week. Come on, Caleb, you can do it. Yay! Well done. Good job. <laughs> Never imagined the whole morning would be taken up by lighting two <laughs> candles. Well done, Caleb. So again, we give you a warm welcome this morning thanks again for joining with us thank you again for allowing us into your homes or wherever you're watching this from uh, i'll pray and then we'll spend some time worshiping together father we again come before you today lord we thank you that we can be together like this we can we can join together even if not physically, we are still one in spirit. And your promise is that whenever we gather in your name, that you are here with us, Lord. So we thank you for that promise. Lord, our prayer this morning is that you would come yes. and yes. move in our midst. Holy yes. Spirit, will you come? and touch us. Yes. Come and reveal Jesus to us, yes. Lord. Yes. Lord, this is all about you today. We are here for you, Lord. We are here to give you glory, honor, and praise. Lord, in this season, as we wait for Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, thank you that he is already here. Thank you that you are always with us, Lord. And our prayer is that you would fill our homes, fill our hearts today as we worship you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, later on, we have uh, communion together. So if you can get your whatever you take as communion, if you can get that together, it would be good. Salvation, his empire shall bring 
and joy to the nations when Jesus is King. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He is all we need. And lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. For His return, we watch and we pray. the dawn of that day, we'll join in singing with all the redeemed, cause Satan is vanquished and Jesus is King. Come let us sing a song, a song declaring we belong. all we need and lift up a heart of praise sing now with voices raised to Jesus sing to the King come let us sing a song a song declaring we belong to Jesus is all we need. And lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. Come, let us sing a song. A song declaring we belong. Jesus, He is all we need. Lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. Come, let us sing a song. A song declaring that we belong to Jesus. He is all we need. And lift up your heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. 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 star burns in the darkness, shines with a promise, Emmanuel. One child born in the stillness, 
living within us, Emmanuel. We're singing glory, glory. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. We're singing glory, glory.
Well, thank you that we can worship you with the ancient and with the modern. Yes. We can worship you with carols that are 
I don't know, maybe hundreds of years old, and we can worship with you with songs that are written recently. Lord, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise. We praise you and we worship you because you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be praised, you are worthy to be thanked, you are worthy to be adored, Lord. And Lord, just because we stop singing, I pray that we don't stop worshipping you. And then with all that we do this morning, Lord, we are here because of you, Lord. We are here because we want to experience your presence with us. We want to know Emmanuel, God, with us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. time-honored fashion, we, uh, we welcome you all this morning, Margaret, Nikki, and Jackie, Jason, and uh, maybe Pauline, depending on whether or not she's working, Lucy, uh, Linda and David, Peter and Sue, Andrew and Denise and uh, the family, Massey and Bless, uh, Lorna, Tim, Stuart, and Patricia, Sandra, uh, Helena, I have to say uh, to Helena and Michael, happy anniversary. Is it their fourth wedding anniversary? Is it? I think it's some fifth. But happy anniversary to you too. Uh, Anita, good morning to you. Anita, Sarah, and James, uh, Ruth. Dale, uh, Donald and Wendy, um, Malcolm and Jenny, Gary way over in, uh, where is he? British Columbia. Uh, Jan, lovely to have you with us, Jan. Uh, Claire and Craig. Evelyn, uh, lovely to have you with us. Again, Evelyn, Susie. Great to have you, and probably Lucas. Uh, she can't go far without Lucas. He's only coming up for two. Uh, be very excited about Christmas this year, I am sure. He'll understand it more than last year. Uh, hi to Wendy. Hi to Harvey. Great to see you. Uh, Christine, lovely to have you with us. Christine, Stephen, and Elizabeth. Anne-Marie, uh, Maggie, uh, Joy, and possibly Clarissa, Pauline, lovely to have you with us, Pauline, uh, Elaine, Olive, Georgie, Isabel, oh, that's a new name, Isabel has popped up, lovely to have you with us, Isabel, what are you saying, dear? Six years for Michael and Helena. Wow, doesn't seem like that. I married them as well. But uh, six years, time flies when you're enjoying yourself. Uh, Elaine, Harry, and Hannah. Lovely to have you all with us. And again, I must bore you to death with reading all these names out and bore you to death with saying how much it means to us for you to continue uh, to allow us into your homes. My prayer, my consistent prayer through the week, I mean, we write these names down. I pray for you folks through the week, and my consistent prayer is that, that you know Emmanuel in this season, that you know Emmanuel, you know God with you, not just this morning, 
but Monday to Saturday as well, that you know God is with you. Uh, I'll, do, I'll do the announcements again, quite a few announcements. Caleb, can you put up the details of the Christmas box? Uh, you have, I would say you probably have until about Wednesday uh, to tell me that you want one of these boxes. I've had uh, quite a few requests. You would have to come and pick it up uh, on Saturday. You can have uh, basically as many as you are able to give away. Um, not just for Christians, it's a great outreach. It's a great way of introducing people um, to the gospel. They will hear the gospel next Sunday night. The, uh, the program will, will go out on YouTube. Uh, I'm hopeful that it will also go out on our Facebook channel or, or our YouTube channel. Um, I'll give you more details uh, by Friday on that. So if you want uh, one of these Christmas boxes, please email me. Email is the best way uh, to do it. Um, so that's Christmas boxes. Next uh, Sunday morning, we are going to have, a, um, we're, we're oversubscribed for the number of people who wanted to come on Sunday morning and share in the first service, really, that we'll have had a significant number of people in uh, for coming, must be coming up for nine months, isn't it? Uh, so we're oversubscribed for this coming Sunday, but if you want to come uh, the following Sunday, there are still a few spaces left for that. But again, please, uh, please email me. Email me is the best way for me to keep track of who's coming uh, I can't believe that so many intelligent people uh, were, were, have been trying to tell me in various different ways. One of my problems is that I communicate with people in so many different ways, I forget where uh, your communication is. So please email me the church email address you'll get off the website. It's uh, info at perthelum.org.uk. So please, if you want to come uh, on the 20th, which will be something of a kind of carol service, uh, please uh, get in touch with me. I have a few spaces left for Sunday the 20th. Uh, announcements. Tonight, the youth will uh, have their youth meeting on Zoom at uh, 6.30. Uh, again, email me or get in touch with me uh, and... I will give you the Zoom details if you want to join that. The kids have kids. They're hardly kids. The youth have a great time on that. Miriam does a fantastic job uh, leading that. So uh, that's on tonight at 6.30. No uh, prayer meetings through the week. No prayer meeting on Tuesday at lunchtime. No prayer meeting on uh, Wednesday evening, but we will meet on Zoom on Wednesday evening. I can get details to you if, if you want to attend that. Uh, Caleb's not here at the moment to put up the uh, screen with the bank details and the address. Are you able to do that? Where Where is he? Thank you. So that's hopefully the church address and the bank details. Uh, if you want to uh, give an offering, uh, and again, thank you. I thank you for uh, for your continued support. Uh, we do, we do uh, still have overheads uh, in the church, even though we can't physically meet 
Uh, our electricity consumption has gone down uh, significantly. Um, but we do still have overheads in the church. And I do thank you that our, you, you, you've kept our heads above water, uh, which is quite, I, I, I think it's incredible, an incredible testimony to you all uh, for your faithfulness in that way. So if you want to give, those are two ways to give. You could also put an envelope through the door uh, if you're around Perth. So uh, I think that's all the announcements for this week. Um, this morning, I'm going to speak uh, again the whole season of, of Advent. Um, I've been quite taken by it, and the more I look at it, the more I, I, I probably become uh, encouraged and, and, and attracted to it. Um, gonna, I'm going to look at a few different scriptures today, but I'm, I'm pinning the whole thing on Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah chapter 9, and particularly verse 6. Isaiah prophesied in the first half of the 8th century BC, so that's somewhere between 800 and 750 years before the, the birth of of Jesus. He, he prophesied this, for, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now, we're going to look at the words roundabout Prince of Peace. The whole theme today is about peace. Prince of Peace. So the Hebrew word for prince is the word sar, which means a ruler of, of, of various spheres. It can be a military ruler. It can be a religious ruler. It can be a governmental ruler. It's the word for a commander, a government official, a prince, a chief, a leader. The Prince of Peace is a title that was specifically given to a child who would rule on David's throne, referring, of course, to, at that point, the coming Messiah. So that's Prince, the the next word has to be one of my favorite words in all the world. It's the word shalom. This amazing uh, Hebrew word which, which we, we translate as, as, as peace. It is so much more than peace. The first thing that I want to to say about the word that is shalom is not about an absence of conflict. It is about the presence of peace. It's not about living without war or strife. It is living in peace and safety and prosperity. It's all about well-being. It's about being intact. It's about being whole and wholeness. It can have a focus on security, safety, and can, can, can conjure up images and bring feelings of satisfaction, well-being, and contentment. I encourage people in Perth Elam to use it as a greeting, a farewell, a coming and a going. I, I reckon it's one of the reasons 
that, that the Jews are so blessed as a nation. Multiple times a day, this incredible blessing is spoken over each of them. When they meet each other, they meet each other with a shalom. When they depart from each other, they, they bless each other with a shalom. Shalom is not a state. It's a way of life. This whole idea of, of peace is, uh, is, is, is more than not being at war and not being in conflict. It's about everything being just right, just so as God has ordained. And Jesus' birth brought the Prince of Peace into our physical presence. The best news, the greatest news is that he has never left us. Jesus is still with us because he's in our hearts. Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace is everlasting, never ceasing, never ending. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 7 tells us this, the increase of his government and peace, or of the, in the, the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. It goes on to say that it will be upheld forever. It's not something that was, that was there then and isn't there now. It's not something that, that is seasonal, like it grows and then blooms in the summer. It is everlasting. What the Prince of Peace established, we can be assured that it will never end. I hope somebody is saying hallelujah. There are so many scriptures on peace. There are well over a hundred. So where do I go this morning and the limited time that I have? What do I say? I think it's really important for us to realize afresh that it is eternal. It, it doesn't go away. This, this way of life of living in peace. We are designed, we are wired up. It's in our DNA that we should live in that. It's here, or at least it's available right now for you and for me. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 16 says this. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. Let me read that again. Let that just sink in. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way, the Lord be with you all. Lord of peace. I won't bore you with the actual Greek words, but it's the Greek version of Sar Shalom. Both Greek words carry the same thoughts and ideas from the Hebrew prince of peace, Sar Shalom. It's worth saying, it's worth noting that peace doesn't mean easy. We can be living in peace just now, whilst we're going through some of the most challenging times that most of us have ever gone through. Jesus never promised it easy. In fact, he told us to expect tribulation in John chapter 16, verse 33. 
and trials in James chapter 1 verse 2. He didn't promise us an easy life. He did, however, promise that he would be with us. He did promise that he would help us. He said that if we call on him, he would give us the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. If we call on him, he will give us the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. That's what happens when you're going through a tribulation and somebody says to you, I don't know why you're not falling to bits. It's because God has given us the peace that is beyond people's understanding. But make, make a note, underline the fact that it's in response to us calling on Him. Like many things, even though it's there, it's not automatic. You have to make a draw on it. I don't walk past an electric socket and kind of walk around it in case electricity fires out at me. You have to make a demand on the electricity before it will come out. I don't go to the tap and just say water, although you can now get taps that will respond to that. You have to turn the tap. You have to make a demand on it. And there is this, there's this, I don't know, it seems strange to me that God has made a way, but we have to make a demand on it. We have to call upon Him. If we call on Him, he will give us the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. You see, God won't force you to live in peace. He won't force peace upon you. You can have the option of living in misery. It is an option. You choose. I suppose it's up to you. And that choice brings me on to my second point. The first point being that we have to call on God. And He will give us the peace beyond understanding. My second point that I've chosen to bring out today is from Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Notice that it says peacemakers and not peacekeepers. One of the worst named organizations, I think, on earth is a United Nations peacekeeping force. They are there to observe. They can actually do very little about what they often see. And the positive sense of the word peace, that we see Jesus coming brought. They can do almost nothing. They, they, they have no influence in the positive sense of peace because they're not peacemakers, they're peacekeepers. They truly are there to observe and to try to keep the different factions purely from conflict. Blessed are the peacemakers, not the pacifists who just carry on regardless as long as nobody is fighting. Peacemakers. The word means those who enter into peace. The kind of peace that I explained, the shalom, a, a peacekeeper is just a name for somebody. A peacemaker is a verb. It's something that you do. No matter what harsh hardships, no matter how harsh life 
gets, no matter what we face, we can ask for a peace that comes from God that is not dependent on our own strength or the situation round about us. And that has to give you hope in what we're going through at the moment. We can enter into that peace rather than observing the status quo. We can be changers. We can be world changers by being peacemakers rather than just looking on and being peacekeepers. An incredible example of peace is the, the Christmas truce of 1914, five months after the First World War occurred, or the First World War started, we have this amazing day, the Christmas truce of 1914, when troops from both sides of the conflict came out of their trenches and shared the essence of Christmas together. What happened during the Christmas truce of 1914? It started with German soldiers singing Christmas carols and then British soldiers joined in. At first light on Christmas Day, German soldiers started to appear from their strongholds and they approached the Allied lines across what was termed no man's land calling out in English, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. At first, the Allied soldiers thought it was some kind of trick. They thought they were being drawn into something. But seeing the Germans unarmed, they too climbed out of their trenches and shook hands with their enemy, who earlier they were trying to kill. They exchanged gifts, all that they had. They exchanged cigarettes. They exchanged food. They sang carols together and songs. And there was even, there's a documented case that they played a game of football. Christmas, the celebration of hope, peace, joy, and love managed to bring mortal enemies together as friends for a time. Shalom, peace. Did you, do you have any idea who was credited with making it all happen? A peacemaker. Somebody who wanted to make a difference. On December the 7th, in 1914, Pope Benedict the 15th suggested a temporary peace for the celebration of Christmas. The warring countries refused to create an official ceasefire. But on Christmas Day, the soldiers in the trenches declared their own unofficial truce, peace, shalom. They moved into this peace inspired by the peacemaker. They made peace, even if it was only temporary. For them on that day, it must have made a huge difference. In this case, it was devastatingly short. It only lasted for Christmas Day but it still stands as a great demonstration of what a peacemaker can do. Whether or not you agree with what he stands for, Pope Benedict spent much of his time being a peacemaker. He influenced others to bring an end to World War I. On this Advent in this Advent as we consider the four themes of hope, peace, joy, and love. We celebrate the Prince 
of peace. And at this time in our world where there is so much that needs peace, let's seek God as we are encouraged to do in Philippians and receive the peace that surpasses all understanding. And when we have received, let it motivate us to be peacemakers, not just people who stand and watch, but people who get involved and bring peace, show peace. Peace be with you this season. Father, help us. Help us to call on you for that peace that surpasses all our understanding. And help us to be peacemakers. Help us to be people who change things. With all that that word shalom means, with all that it is, let us live in that And let us be doers, not just, not just watchers. Not just passive. As we come around the table this morning, This table is about the Prince of Peace. The greatest, greatest act that was ever done to bring peace and reconciliation was when Jesus hung on a cross and died for you and for me. And this morning, we remember him. We remember what he did for us. Yes, at this season, we're very much focused on, on the fact that Jesus came as a helpless baby. But he died to take away the sins of the world. As we take bread this morning and break it as a symbol of his body that was broken for us. And we take the cup, a symbol of his blood that was poured out for you and for me. The Prince of Peace. His blood restores us. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And we thank you, Lord, that we don't have to bleed. You bled and sacrificed for us. Lord, we thank you. Without you, we are nothing. But with you, there is nothing that we can't do.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Folks, again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for letting us in to your space today. I hope that you know Sar Shalom this week, the Prince of Peace. I hope that you draw close to him. I hope that you cry out to God and receive that peace that surpasses all understanding. I hope that this week you're able to be a peacemaker and, and, and not just a peacekeeper. I want to speak that word over you as a blessing. Have a great week and shalom. <laughs>